Hello everyone, this is Brian, and welcome to episode 8 of my reusable space program. So, I'm in 1.1. Check it out. Everything's looking pretty good. I'm still using some mods that are not uh, you know, fully released. They're in pre-release mode. The mod that did the textures here is, um, hasn't been updated yet, so that's okay. I'm alright I'm all with that. Small price to pay. Um, I am noticing that with procedural parts, it takes literally a couple of minutes to load the station up. I'm assuming it's procedural parts that it, that's doing this. Um, so I may replace um, these two boosters here. But probably be easier to do that after they do the mission here to get this probe underway. So that's what I'm going to do now. So let's see what we got here. Full fuel tanks. Yeah, I was leaving full. I'm only going to use one of those. So let's undock this. And undock this one. And I will go ahead and move that probe around and attach it to the booster. a piece of cake compared to that stuff I was doing before moving those big huge fuel tanks around.
All right, I don't know what you missed there. I had a fraps crash. So coming up here on the transfer and it's gonna be time to light this engine up here shortly. I actually think I missed it by one orbit here. Let's go ahead and advance this by one here. Yeah, 10 minutes, that's better. Shouldn't affect things too much. I can always do a mid course correction. Looks like the burn time is moving predictably, so I'm going to throttle back and then start up again in about a minute. There we go. It's going to be a dark burn here. Not anything I can do about that.
Now to do the retro burn here to bring this booster back into orbit around Kerbin. So I'm just going to thrust backwards around the retrograde vector and adjust its attitude as necessary to keep the periopsis at a reasonable uh, level. I don't want to dip into the atmosphere. This is an inefficient burn, so what I'll do is I'll just get it down enough that it's not going to be influenced by um, MUN or anything else, you know, maybe down to the vicinity of those geosynchronous satellites. And then once I get it up to the apoapsis, I will adjust, make a final adjustment on the periapsis. Then when I get down to the periapsis, then I'll bring its apoapsis all the way down and circularize and get back to uh, the station. Now I did have one concern with the surveyor, as you probably noticed, as it was being boosted up there, it was going to pass through the sphere of influence of MUN. So I want to make sure it's not going to alter its orbit too much. Uh, also, it'll give me a chance here to tweak the antenna position and get it aimed up at uh, the satellite it's actually aimed at, which is kind of cool. Uh, that has no effect on the game, but this is kind of neat to see. And uh, also, I want to get some beauty shots. You know, this is kind of the culmination of hard work, and uh, it'll be very nice to watch it uh, pass out of the um, Kerbin system here. Okay, and now that it's outside of the sphere of influence of MUN, I'm going to double check that it's still on course for Duna. And after that, we'll switch over to the booster and get that back into a circular orbit around Kerbin. Started this burn totally late. Whatever. Got lots of fuel. I probably could have done this with, I don't know, half the fuel tanks full or something. That's weird. I certainly don't want that. Let's see if I just hold this uh, retrograde. Kill that. Oh, there were two nodes. That's what it was.
Okay, I think that's about it for tonight. I will go ahead and do the rendezvous off screen, and then in the next episode, we'll probably have to maybe do some revamping of my uh, main booster and add on, I'm thinking I'll add on some modules to the space station so we can get people up there, and then also the next probe uh, that will be headed towards uh, EVE. So, thank you for watching, have a great night, and as always, fly with confidence. <laughs>